Here's a little plum. Let's see what this one tastes like. I haven't tasted this one. Mmm. Very good. I'm pretty happy with it. Mm-hmm. These little cherry tomatoes actually taste like cherries with a tomato. I love them. Very good. Mm. Welcome to A Simple Life. I'm Cal. I hope you enjoy yourself today. We are going to go check on our pigs. Now, our pigs are out on this pasture, and this pasture has actually had pigs in it uh, all of last winter and then this summer. The difference between this pasture and where I have my pigs up at Herman's is Herman's, I keep them under trees. Here, we keep them in a hay field. Now, what has it done that's interesting to my field? Well, one thing is you would think this field would be absolutely devastated by the fact that it had pigs in it. And while there are some spots that are very dried out, like here, we also have a lot of good green grass. Now, why do we have that? Well, I'm gonna put it to the fact that the pigs create a lot of divots in the ground. And those divots retain more moisture. Now, could I be wrong about that? I could be. But the other thing that pigs do is because we feed them whole grains, we end up with some variety in our pasture. Here's a good example of some of that variety. This is sorghum that has taken seed because we feed our pigs sorghum instead of corn, and we feed them a whole grain. Some of it's roasted, but some of it's whole grain. And that whole grain has taken the seed, and that's not the only place it's taken. We've had some over here. Pigs have gotten some over there. We have some, look at this, we have oats over here. This is actually a Paul's naked oat, and it's really cool because it's a naked oat. It doesn't have the same structure as your typical oat. I don't need a lot. I just need a little. I just need a little here and a little there. And that's gonna spread across the fields. Look at this. Here's another patch of sorghum. It's popping up. It looks like corn, but it's not. And here's some, here's some more oats. Some more sorghum over here. That white right there, that's all oats. And some sorghum. And some more sorghum. And as I go through this field, I'm gonna find more and more of this. And it's one of the reasons why I love feeding my pigs whole grains. Now, I'm not really a fan of feeding my pigs grains. I'd rather not grain them at all. I don't have the methodologies in place yet to be able to, well, not feed my pigs grains. Someday, hopefully, I'd love to. Now, here's some more sorghum, and here's some that has gone to seed. Look at that. This right here, to me, is gold. The fact that I have sorghum going to seed in the middle of a field that has no irrigation at all, that to me is absolute gold. Because it means that it's gonna spread and next year I will have more. So when I go and check on my pigs or I check on my cattle and I see areas where I see some odd things standing out, but I know what they are, I'm very excited. Because it tells me that I'm starting to build variety in my pasture. And in the last video, I talked about my cows and how we're gonna build variety in their pasture. And my pigs, we're gonna do a similar thing, but slightly different. We're gonna build variety in our pig pastures, but there's gonna be a slightly different variety. As we start to build up this field to be a perfect environment to raise pigs on, it's pretty darn close, but as, we get be as it gets better, we are gonna to continue to have varieties in here that the pigs love and the pigs enjoy to eat. And so, the pigs, hi piggies! You guys are hot. Oh boy, you are hot, I can hear you. Okay, so the boys just moved them today and the fact that they were just moved today is the reason why they don't have their other shelter out here and they don't have a wallow. So what we're gonna do is right now, I'm gonna create a little wallow for them because, uh, well, they need a bit of a wallow. And it's a pretty warm day. It's not the hottest day it's been, but it's warm enough that they're gonna need a wallow. Well, today is a hot day, and the boys had reset up the pig's area this morning, 
but I made some adjustments and the adjustments I made one thing is we brought out the, the water shelter it needed to be brought out they were actually just filling it back at the house so we got that set up we got a little bit of a wallow going not much of one just a little bit the water tank is there too with the shelters but the other thing I did was I extended the fencing underneath that apple tree there's actually a couple apple trees there and then I also extended the pasture all the way back here right up against the stream so they're catching some of the speckled shade off these trees in the evening that's not gonna fix the heat situation that we're gonna have for the next week or longer or it looks like we're gonna have some temperatures up, up close to hundred so on those days what we'll be doing is we'll be bringing out 55 gallon drums of water probably twice a day and dumping them basically just creating wallows so we'll probably do like one like right here because this is a low lining line area right here. And then we'll probably also one, do one back over here just to help because it's easy to access and it's right up against this shade that they're really gonna like, okay? Um, it's not the biggest area, but it's enough of an area that they can get underneath in here and back over here. So I think we'll be okay when it comes to having them out here. Now, long-term, obviously this isn't the way to do this. And long term, I'm going to have trees in here. And that's going to go back to the same thing I'm kind of doing in the cattle area, which is going to be a mix of mulberries and oak trees, along with some faster growing like organ ash and stuff like that. Out of all the trees that grow really good in this area, the organ ash is one I'd prefer over like the hawthorn or something like that. So what we'll have in here is we're going to have a mix of organ ash, some oaks, maybe a few big leaf maples just because of the how quick they grow, some mulberries, um, black locusts, and probably some hawthorn. The hawthorn not as much on purpose, it will just go. And when I see one pop up, if it's in an ideal area, I'll leave it. But that's going to take years to really kind of get that developed and well, doing what we want out here. But I figured I'd show you guys the pigs. All right, so Autumn's getting her uh, her afternoon bath <laughs> as much as you can get. Um, she appreciates it, I know. Uh, I find the pigs down here actually have a harder time staying cool than the pigs up at Herman's, which is really strange because you would think the ones up at Herman's have a harder time. Well, it turns out up at Herman's, because there's such a consistent breeze, the pigs do really good up there. Over time, will I possibly move some of my pigs up there? I thought, definitely thought about moving a good portion of our pigs up there, but I'm not sure what that'll look like and if that'll happen. Um, it's definitely something that I've considered. All right, well, I'm gonna get up to Herman's and I'll show you what I get to up there. I figured I'd check on the pigs and I'm kind of glad I checked on the pigs. Not that they were in bad shape, but you definitely, sometimes it takes an adult eye to be critical of a situation. And uh, I think that's what it took. Look at these guys, man. You would think with fresh berries, there'd be a little bit of a quenching of your thirst if you're thirsty, but it doesn't happen. It's really quite odd. I would expect something so juicy to help with that, but instead, it always just makes me thirsty, and I don't understand that. Hmm still really good. Now let's talk about figs because holy smokes I mean look at these guys. How do I know when a fig is ready to pick? It's hard to know because they're so good you kind of want to pick them all. Here's what I do to figure out whether they're ripe. First thing I do is I find a fig that looks nice and big and it's drooping. You want it to start drooping down. So if you see these figs are sticking straight out, they're nowhere even close. These guys are starting to droop down, okay? And then I feel them and I kind of feel for weight. And this one, if you see, it doesn't, it is, it's obviously, it has some weight to it, but this one feels heavy. And so I'm gonna actually show you the difference between these two figs. I'm gonna get both these figs and open them up and I'll show you what the difference is. All right. See that? See all that liquid in there? That is because that is nice and ripe and heavy with sugars and syrup and it's just the most delicious thing you've ever had. All right. Now, just because I want to prove a point, I'm going to pick one that I know is not as ripe, even though it looks like it's ripe. It's, got, it's sagging the whole nine, but here's the deal. 
you look, see it's not as juicy. I'll put them side by side so you can see the difference. See the difference? One's very juicy and one's just kind of juicy. The one that's kind of juicy is going to taste a little off. It's not going to taste the way you want it to. And what I mean by the way you want it to, well, if you have a little patience, every fig will be absolutely delicious. Except for the ones the birds and the ants get. You want it to feel like a ball of dough. If it feels like a ball of foam, like it's just squishy, but it doesn't have any weight to it, it's getting there, but it doesn't have the sugars yet, which means you don't want to eat it. That's kind of how I test whether or not my figs are ready to be eaten. Look at this. Our, our prunes are starting to come on. These Bartlett pears, they're doing really good. They're doing very good. You can see we have a lot on. They're doing really excellent. Same with the apples. So, I finally realized what a food forest was. It's having so much stinking food around you that's ready to be eaten that you can't eat it all. And then you gotta start figuring ways to give it away or preserve it or make juice out of it or something. Look at this apple tree. Look at that. I mean, and they're pretty stinking clean. What I mean by clean is we don't have a lot of scab. We got a few little worm marks and stuff like that, but nothing crazy. They're looking really good. Now they're not super huge. And the main reason they're not super huge is because we put no fertilizer underneath of them. These trees really haven't been pruned in years. So if I was to prune this tree back and we were to get some cover crop underneath here that would be really healthy for the tree, well, we'd have some really amazing apples. Speaking of amazing things that are just standing next to you, here's a little plum. Let's see what this one tastes like. I haven't tasted this one. Mmm, very good. Our shiro plums are over here. And we actually just picked about 110 pounds off and sold them to a local jam maker. And here's some of those shiro plums. And they are heavenly. I mean that. They seriously are heavenly. And the crop's pretty good this year. I mean, we have, there's a little bit of scab right there. But other than that, pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm. So good. All right another apple tree and then these are Clint's favorite this is an Asian pear and they are not ripe yet but they are very very delicious yep. well a little bit of update on our food forest now let me show you some stuff in our garden because our garden is still doing really well I'm really happy with it I learned some what I would say are kind of hard lessons learned a few hard lessons um, this year when it comes to gardening and and not they're not insanely hard just I realized a few things that I didn't know and um, well, there's a lot of things I don't know but I realized a few things I didn't know and a greenhouse really affects how crops grow it really does more than you would think and more than I thought this trestle while it was really fun to build and it seemed like it was gonna be a brilliant idea was not a brilliant idea. It worked, but it didn't work the way I really wanted it to. So I'm not gonna do it again, but I learned. It was it was very fun to do, it worked out really well. Our little tiny tomatoes, little cherry tomatoes, were absolutely delicious. Mm. And I actually don't really like tomatoes. Christine loves tomatoes. But this cherry, these little cherry tomatoes actually taste like cherries with a tomato. I love them, very good. We have more cucumbers than we know what to do with. Now we're starting to get into things that I like. The jalapenos. So every year, Christine will take jalapenos and onions and tomatoes and she barbecues them all up. And then she makes salsa. And she makes the most delicious salsa. And you're not expecting anything. It's just good and flavorful. And then it just hits you like a ton of bricks. And I love it. And so that's why we have jalapenos. It's one of the reasons why we have so many tomatoes. And it's one of the reasons why we have so many onions. The onions are actually doing good. The onions are a little weedy right now. And it's mostly because they're basically done. So I just need to come in 
and start taking them out. They're ready. I'm actually gonna probably do that in the next day or so. So they are definitely ready to go. Most of them have fallen over. We're not watering them anymore. We're just watering the leeks, which are right next to them. Interesting thing about the broccoli. I'd given up on this one variety. I thought we had planted it too late and it just had gone to leaves. We didn't get any heads off of it. But I came today and it looks like we have our first head forming, which I really don't understand because we were about to get into a heat wave. That was one of the things that I had kind of learned is broccoli does not belong in the greenhouse. I didn't realize that. I didn't really think it was much of a big deal to put it in here with everything else, but I learned that I really don't need my broccoli in here. And in the future, I'm actually gonna do all my broccoli and Brussels sprouts, all that kind of stuff in a different garden. I'm gonna call it like my cool weather garden. And what do I mean by a cool weather garden? It's a garden that has, we'll call it, 60% um, shade during the day. It's just a cooler, it's on the north side. It's got a lot of shade and it still gets plenty of sun to grow, but not enough sun to really start heating the soil up and stuff. So I have an idea of where I'm gonna do that. I've been thinking about it. It's an idea I've been planning and working through. And my broccoli, my cabbages, um, my kales, uh, my Brussels sprouts, all those type of things will actually go there along with my potatoes I think are gonna go there as well. Because I'm seeing a pattern. I talk about that a lot. I talk about like just looking for patterns. And I, when I see a pattern and I see something that is working or something that's not working, then I wanna replicate it. Because if it's working, like why not replicate it? If it's not working, well, then I don't replicate it. So in this case, it's not working in here. I mean, it works, but it's not working, working. It could be much better. Because I'm seeing a pattern that I can learn from, I'm going to take those learnings and I'm gonna apply them going forward. I've learned a lot. I've, I've really taken a lot of, of learnings, things that I worked and didn't work, timing issues, all kinds of stuff. It's really been spectacular to kind of have an experiment and be okay with some failure. And that's, I haven't been truly 100% okay with the failure. Some of them I've taken a little hard. But overall, it's just been a good learning experience. That's a little update on our pigs and our food forest. This is my buddy, Jagger. Jagger, <laughs> he's, uh, he's quite the lover. If you hear him yipping and uh, running around with me, it's because he likes to, he hangs out with me when I'm up here. That's right, and he's a very sweet boy. He's a Patterdale Terrier. And yes, I, I, everybody, mm -hmm, yeah, I know, I know, I know. So, um, sorry for the, for the distraction. But thank you guys so much for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed yourself.